Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today, I am going to start the process on this rocking chair that I've been wanting to build for years. Uh, this chair has been at my mom's house for years, uh, way before I was even born. There's a lot of history to this chair in our house. Um, a lot of family members have sat in this chair, used this chair. A few things that uh, kind of kind of scare me about this project. A, I've never built a chair before, and B, I've never built a rocking chair before. So there's gonna be a lot of interesting challenges to this for me. Uh, it's gonna be a learning curve for sure, and I'm looking forward to uh, digging into this. The seat is about uh, two and a half inches thick, and at the longest point, it's about 24 inches wide. So I really want to find a solid piece that big <laughs> so that's going to be a challenge in itself um, it's really going to depend on what piece i find for this is going to depend on the species of wood for the rest of it uh, a couple factors that i have to worry about is a money and b this seat um, i'm going to have a hard time finding this piece of wood if anybody has any suggestions where i can find a piece like this uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. So let me give you a little rundown uh, of what I'm worried about on this chair. Uh, being my first time uh, making a chair like this. Uh, first of all, this spindle right here is the most intimidating factor for me. Uh, this spindle here is about 33 inches long and it's all turned on the lathe, on a lathe. So one way or the other, I'll figure that out. The other intimidating factor um, that I have is the seat itself. As I mentioned, the seat itself is about two and a half inches thick and at the longest point is 24 inches wide. So A, I don't have any resources that I know of near me to get a piece that big. And I'd, I would really like one solid piece instead of glue ups. The rest of the spindles on this will not be a problem on my lathe. The longest spindle is this one up front. It is, uh, I think it was 16 inches, if I remember right. Yeah, 16 inches without the mortise or the uh, tenons. And uh, so I, I figured that bring it back out to, you know, about 18 inches, which is the max on my lathe. The legs that attach to the rockers are the seats and the rockers. Um, that's not a problem on my lathe. Uh, shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, all four of those appear to be the same. I'm not sure at this point. Rockers themselves. Um, I do have a steam bender where I could steam those legs or... Um, or I could probably run them through a bandsaw if I find the right piece of wood where I can uh, get the grain going the right direction. The only other intimidating factor that uh, I may be worried about is uh, maybe these slats. Uh, not only the profile this way, but the profile this way as well because it does kind of bend up and go in for the arch of the back. The top piece here uh, actually, these both two top pieces here, uh, they also have a convex um, shape to them. These simple details here won't be a problem on the lathe. It doesn't look like a complicated profile, but there's actually quite a bit going on here. A, you got the shape going this way. B, is kind of tilted this way, if you can see it at my angle, and I'll show you here in a minute. It's kind of tilted this way, so it's going in like this. And then it also meets up right here at this turning here uh, where there's a looks like a probably a simple screw back here that's holding that in the other some of the other details on this particular chair it has a hand painted pin, uh, pinstripe on the uh, handrail uh, some on the spindles and uh, on the seats and the back of the slats there's even some flowers painted up on the top I'm not gonna do painted on my piece, <clears throat> but what did kind of run run through my head, this, like on this particular slat, or on these slats, 
The painted uh, detail runs up just maybe a quarter inch in and it's about a sixteenth inch stripe and it just runs the perimeter of the piece. What I did consider is uh, maybe routing a, a groove in instead of doing the uh, painted detail. So I'll give you a little walk around of this, uh, some little close ups and uh, we'll call this quits. I'm not going to do this all in one project. It's probably going to be a slew of projects over the summer, but I am really looking forward to getting cracking on this. I've been wanting to do this for a very, very, very long time. And uh, this is also going to be my first rocking chair project. So uh, look forward to that this summer. One of the things that I need to do is to get all the dimensions and uh, any templates that I'm going to have or anything of that nature for this chair. Basically, in order to do that, you almost kind of have to reverse engineer it. And me not being an engineer, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. so. I am going to do it the way I think that might be easiest. <laughs> so I got some of this brown um, craft paper. Uh, pick it up at Hobby Lobby or just about anywhere I think. And the first piece that I'm really concerned about is the seat. One of the things I'm going to do, and I need this anyway, is to make a template of the seat. Now I think the seat is the only piece that I actually have to do the template on. The rest of it, I can just take measurements and uh, uh, work off of that. But the seat I really don't want to mess up on. Uh, it's going to be the most important part of the chair and it's going to be the most visible piece to the chair as well. So like I said, I got this craft paper and I've turn the chair upside down, it's loosely clamped to the bench, and essentially, I'm gonna trace it. So I'm just putting the board, just a scrap board up here so I can have something to trace against. It's actually working out pretty decent, I think. Now the other thing I'm doing, I got this little, just a notebook. I'm labeling each piece as I go. And obviously this one's the seat. And I'm measuring those pieces as I go as well off the piece, not off of any template. Now I'm gonna take the largest measure, measurement, which is uh, 22 and a quarter by Like 18 is the largest that way. 
So 22 and a quarter. This way. And 18 this way. And I believe I already measured it as two and a half inches thick. Yes, it is. 2.5 thick. So I put that on the template and I'm also going to put this on my notebook. That way when I go searching for the piece of wood that I need, I have everything I need. What I'm doing here is uh, I'm labeling each spindle and figuring out how long of a piece that I need and how thick of a piece I need to accomplish that spindle on the lathe. As I'm facing the front of the chair, that's how I'm labeling it. So this is the left side, this is the right side. So I wonder how long those tenons are. It might be an inch. This one's broken, so I'm gonna, yeah, it's an inch actually. So actually I'm gonna take, put two inches on each length that I get. So what I say, it's 10 and a half on this. So I'm gonna make that 12 and a half. I got nine and a quarter on this. So I'm gonna make that 11 and a quarter. So the thickest part of this spindle which I think is right here, one and three quarter, half there. Okay, so I think a two inch piece of stock will work fine on those. So that's what I'm going to record down for the thickness on all of those spindles. So I'm going to add an inch to the bottom here for the mortise. And I might go a little longer on that one, probably an inch and a half. So I'm just on the safe side, I'm gonna add two inches. Here's a good example for the fast cap flat back tape measure. I can actually bend that around material and get pretty darn close. So I got 21 and a half showing you know, the size of this is one so I think you get the idea of what I'm going for here um, I'm just getting the measurements so I know what material I need to buy or how much material I need to buy. All right, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today, I'm going to attempt to try to bend the legs for the rocking chair. Um, my goal is to get this straight piece of cherry into a bent piece like this. 
So what I found out is this is a mock-up of the leg and it's just cut out um, with a scrap piece of cedar. But what I found out is as it's sitting on the ground, if I just cut it out with the cherry, if I'm sitting on the ground, I put pressure here and here like I will when the chair is assembled and somebody sits on it, um, it it's just gonna snap. Uh, you can even bend it this way and hear it snapping. So I'm afraid that's gonna happen with the cherry as well, which it probably will. And my original plan was to have a, a positive and negative mold for the stick so I can put the stick in here and clamp it down and, and bend it into shape. But I had a better suggestion from Izzy Swan to just use the positive side and bend it when I attempt to bend it, clamp it here and just work my way down. And I, th I think he's right. I think I'll get more leverage if I start bending it down and, and putting clamps in it that way. So I'm gonna give that a shot and see what happens. Um, I, I got some good advice from Izzy and uh, Nick Ferry both um, about bending this and uh, I'm going to take that to heart and see if I can get that going. I'm only going to do one leg today just to A, make sure it works. And either way, I'm going to post this video. If it don't work, I got a fail project. But uh, if it works, awesome. So what I've done today is I bent a steeper curve on my positive mold and count of spring back. And I got one of the legs in the bathtub right now it's been soaking all night into water and then i'm going to put that in the steam box for a good hour and then i'm going to come back and try to bend that into shape and maybe i can get some helping hands to help me clamp those as well so if you want to see me bend this leg into shape today stick around it should be a good one regardless Uh, jig is working out pretty well. I'm glad I did it this way versus the other way. Um, I had to get some little bit of help to set the clamps while I bent the wood and towards the last clamp you could tell the wood was starting to uh, uh, stiffen up a little bit so we I got a little nervous and we started working a little faster but um, yeah I, as far as I could tell you got about a minute of working time so it's not a whole lot of, lot of time to play around. So if you're gonna steam bin, I would definitely have your clamps ready and uh, your form ready and ready to go. And uh, if you're gonna have any help doing it, that would be well advised. But it actually bent a lot easier than I was expecting. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, uh, here in uh, probably two or three days, I'm going to uh, take it out and see what we come up with.
little bit of spring back, which I was expecting. It don't seem too bad. Looks like a rocker leg to me. So here is the, the template that I made off the original. Oh man, that is just freaking perfect. Oh, that worked out awesome. Oh man, first shot, first shot, I'm so pleased with that. Check that out. So I still got to do a little bit of shaping, obviously, but the form worked beautifully. I am very pleased with that. So let's uh, examine the leg here, see if there's any splits. You can see it right here on the end, but I should be fine with the amount of material. Yeah. So I gotta remove about that much material anyway. So let's make another one and I will wrap this video up. Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. This is Mike. And uh, today I'm going to do the spindle turning for the lower portion of the rocking chair. It's a pretty simple turning, so I'm pretty much going to speed it up throughout the whole process. And what you see me doing here now is just kind of laying out the lines of all the peaks and valleys of this turning. I'm using that leg to mock up the second leg so they can all match. On the particular rocking chair that I'm doing, the four lower legs are identical. Once I've created one, I can copy that three more times and create all my legs for the lower part of the rocking chair itself. Now I use a, a number of tools here. The parting tool, which I'm using right here, along with the spindle gouge to create most of the beads and coves. Now I also use the easy wood laid tool to do the coves as well. If you notice in the video, you'll see my body rocking. Uh, that's particularly useful for the spindle gouge. You almost kind of got to rock your body to make these, uh, uh, particularly the coves for sure. And a lot of spinning of, or twisting of the spindle gouge as well to create the beads. Um, it, it's a good practice piece actually to, if you've never been on a lathe before it's actually a good practice piece piece because it has a lot of beads and coves to actually uh, uh, learn from it's it's a real good practice piece to try that out on here I'm just using the easy wood lathe tool to uh, further define that cove back to the spindle gouge 
notice my body rocking. This was done with a uh, roughing gouge. I just got to get this particular part down a little, little thinner than than uh, what the blank was. Another bead. After making four of these that day, my fingertips and my wrist was really, really in pain. Um, I, I actually gave a rest for a couple days before I went on to other spindles. Uh, this piece right here I'm turning right here is going to be a half bead transi transitioning into a cove. We'll see that here in a minute. First, I'm going to mark my depth with a parting tool and a micrometer. And then I'm going to use the easy wood lay tool. Notice my body rocking to create that cove. So a half bead transition into a cove. Back to a half bead, and then a full bead, then a half bead, and a cone. That's pretty much all there is to this particular turning. Uh, like I said, I had to make four of them in total, and uh, that's essentially what I did all four times. Now the very first piece, I copied exactly from the rocking chair, and then I used that one to copy the rest. I'll see you next time. So I'm excited to get started on this project. I got my wood picked out. I'm gonna make this entire chair out of cherry. Uh, uh, first of all, big thank you to Bob Lee. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he donated all the wood for this project, so it didn't cost me anything. Um, I got to go to Bob Lee's shop, take a look at his shop, and uh, meet him and his wife, and I had a good time doing that. He lives about five hours from me, and uh, it was well worth the drive. I got to meet him, and... Uh, he also gave me this wood, so uh, I can't thank you enough, Bob, and thank you very, very much. Uh, I already milled up one board that he gave me and cut it into some links and glue up three blanks to make my chair seat. And my last video showed you I made a template for this, so it should be fairly easy to trace this template and uh, rough cut it out on the bandsaw. Now in this blank I got dowel rods, 3 8 dowel rods way up here, 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 and here. That was mostly just to align the blank. Uh, but I don't want to cut into that dowel rod on the chair. So I already got, I got, still got my marks here from where I'm going to get as close as possible without actually going into that dowel rod. So right there should be pretty good. So I'm just gonna tape this down and then uh, trace it out. This template worked out really, really well. Uh, I was kind of afraid that it wasn't gonna work out that well, but 
after I traced it out and cut it out with a pair of scissors and refit the template onto the seat after the fact, it, it was just a perfect fit and I couldn't have asked for uh, an easier method to get the shape of this seat. Now I'm over at the bandsaw. I'm just cutting up against the line. I uh, tried to leave the line as much as possible. And um, with this half inch blade that I had in the bandsaw, it cut through the wood really nicely, uh, but it, it was pretty ragged after, after the fact. And it was kind of hard to uh, get some of the curves with this wide bandsaw blade. Two days before, I normally keep a quarter inch blade or a one eighth inch blade in my bandsaw. But uh, two days before, I broke that particular blade and I was left with my the only blade I had in my shop, which was this half inch blade. It worked out fine, I just had to uh, take my time and make a little extra more cuts. Here, I'm just using the front part of the bandsaw blade to nibble up against a line where I couldn't bend the wood into the saw blade. So I spent a lot of time with the oscillating sander to uh, redefine those edges, getting them up to the line, and also getting rid of the saw blade marks. Now in, earlier in the video I noted I told you I was trying not to cut into those dowel rods that I um, glued up the pieces. Here you can find those dowel rods that I actually cut into. So I had to actually sand those away far enough back where you won't see those dowel rods in the final project. So I had to go past my lines a little bit to get rid of those. So this is 80 grit sandpaper and off camera I used uh, 120 grit sandpaper. Okay I think I got the seat shaped the way I want it, at least the outline of it. It's looking pretty good. I got the edges all rounded off um, and all the edges are pretty smooth. There's a couple high bumps here and there but it's uh, it's looking pretty good at this point. Uh, so I'm going to leave the seat as is for now. I'm waiting on a tool to cup out the seat of it. So it might be a couple more weeks until I actually get that. Um, and I was, I was looking at the old chair. There's not a whole lot of cupping to it. And I'm even considering doing that with a belt sander. Uh, maybe take it outside one day and just go to town on it, but uh, I think this tool that I'm, that I'm going to order will, uh, will make it a little easier. It's just a die grinder tool and uh, it'll just help cup that out a little bit more. In the original chair, it's, it's more cupped out about right here and, uh, and it goes up like this. So there's not a whole lot of, uh, of butt cupping <laughs> if they want to call it that. Um, to do on this piece and this piece will be ready to go. Uh, of course round over the edges and then the seat will be ready to go. The rest of that blank I was actually hoping to get the top two rails of that rocking chair out of but after I uh, cut it down this is what I got left of that blank and it's just not wide enough to do both pieces. And uh, also the grain will be running in the wrong direction for those pieces. So I think I'm just going to have to scrap that idea. I was kind of hoping to get this sap wood to run kind of all the way up the chair, but um, it's not going to happen.
you know what time Ozier is? Mono Lopez. Todd, yeah. Huh? Talk time all the time. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a cool dude. He is. He did a video where he, he, he's showing, he's doing a shop tour. Yeah. And he's got his lathe and he goes, see this big spray on the wall in here? That's where I hit a bug and blew it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Squirt it <laughs> up, I'm like, oh, that's gross. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that's cool.
Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. This is the last piece I got to make for my rocking chair. Uh, I'm excited to actually get the last piece done so I can actually get started assembling this thing. Um, first things first, I got to steam bend this last piece. I've had the piece of wood soaking in the bathtub all night and uh, now I got to build a uh, steam box. Okay, just because my patients are getting the better of me, I'm gonna get some safety gloves here and pull these out. Um, I think I'm ready to go. Um, an hour should be long enough. Very hot. Mm. Let's do this. It's already pretty tight. Got a long way to go. I haven't heard any snapping, so that's good. Okay. Still looking good, I think. I think I need to clamp my jig down though. It's a whole lot of pressure on here. I don't know how much, but it's a lot. I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. A, I can't take it any further because I'm out of strength. My jig is under a lot of tension, um, specifically right in this area. Whew. So what I'm really afraid of is this bar actually popping out of the top. So you can see, I didn't get down as far as I was expecting or as far as I was wanting, but that's a lot to ask out of that board. And it's even more to ask out of this jig. But as it sits right now, I think I'm gonna be okay. It's not as far as I was wanting to go with it, but I think it's gonna be okay. Give me three days and I'll find out.
Okay, so while I was at work today, somebody said that there was a cracking sound from this board today. So I'm about 36 hours or so into this uh, bend, and I really wanted about three days. So since they heard that cracking sound, I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the mold. See what we got. There is some extreme pressure on this jig, I'm telling you. I was asking a whole lot out of this piece of cherry. So let's see what we got. Okay. Yep, a little bit. Look at there. Got some up here too. But it held a shape quite well. I don't know if I could still use this. Uh, the piece that I need to cut out does have a profile. So I still might be able to use it. I'm not giving up hope yet. <laughs> we'll have to uh, stick around and see what happens. Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. 
at, up to this point, I have roughly cut out most of the pieces for the rocking chair. Um, I got to redefine some of these shapes and sand them to final, uh, final size. So that's what this video is about. I'm taking some of the pieces and, or most of the pieces and actually getting them down to the right size. So you'll see me uh, a lot of sanding and uh, the round over bit in the router is uh, the same for all the pieces. Like you've never done it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little joke. Um, this piece is uh, one of the last spindles that I had to turn. Uh, this piece actually is the uh, stretcher between the legs. And again, a simple turning. This one's actually a lot simpler than the other ones, as it only really has uh, a couple details to it. It's mostly just a spindle with a bump out right in the middle. So it's like a large bead right in the middle and uh, it just fades down into a three quarter inch dowel rod essentially. A lot of the same tools and techniques that I'm using. Um, uh, use the roughing gouge to uh, get it down to rough dimensions. Um, the easy wood lay tool, if I haven't mentioned it before, it's actually a roughing gouge. It does the exact same job as my roughing gouge. Uh, the one advantage to the easy wood lay tool is you can uh, use it to make uh, really good coves and uh, get the dimensions of the wood down fairly quickly. So right here at this point, I'm already about halfway done with this spindle. That's not much to this particular spindle. There's one little small cove right in the middle. And then, uh, yeah, final sanding and we're done with this spindle. And I did the same thing with this spindle as I did with everything else. I made one and then made a copy of that one. This spindle here, this was actually the second video that I shot of this series. Uh, so this is actually an older video portion. This particular turning is for the top of the chair uh, in between the two backrest supports. It's just a small detail that this chair has. It has four of these spindles and uh, again a fairly simple turning and the same tools and techniques. So it has a large half cove on each side and then a uh, two half beads and then a bead right in the middle. And notice the uh, uh, body movement again on these spindles uh, is the same principle as all the other ones. You, you got to move your body to get these beads and coves. Uh, the beads you do more twisting of the wrist to uh, create that bead and the coves you do more uh, side to side movement with your body with the tool on your hip. 
Now I know this is the moment everybody's been waiting for. Uh, how am I going to cup out the seat? Well, in a previous video, I bought a tool um, made by King Authors Tools, and it's uh, essentially a grinding tool to cup out the seat. What I'm doing here is doing the same round over that I've done on all the pieces. Uh, it's the same bit, it's the same profile. Uh, it's just a, uh, I think it's a 3 8 round over, I believe. So here's that tool on the grinder, and uh, let's get started cupping this thing. I know a lot of people was wondering how I was going to do this, and here's how I'm doing it. This tool worked out really well. And I mentioned in the seat video uh, that there wasn't a whole lot of cupping actually to this chair, and, and there still wasn't, but this tool made it go really quick. Uh, got the wood chewed up in a short time frame. Matter of fact, it only took about six or eight minutes to actually get it cut down to the rough dimensions. Sure made a mess with the sawdust though. So just little by little, scraping away and uh, grinding away, I got to a shape that I liked. And you can see right there uh, in the middle, it kind of it's a, has a high point. Uh, you probably see it better here with the ruler. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of cupping that was required on this chair, but it worked out real good. kind of hard to show it at a camera angle but I'm hoping the shadow picks up and you can see the uh, the amount that was removed now I'm switching over just to a uh, 60 grit sanding pad to uh, actually redefine that shape more now my mom asked me how I was going to measure that and I was like I'm going to sit on it <laughs> so I did and it uh, felt pretty good so we're going to move forward So some final sanding, I sanded all the way up to uh, 200 or 220 and I uh, used a rag, a wet rag, just to see the low parts that I still had to sand through and uh, it turned out really well. Now that little jig there is just to center up the uh, branding iron on the back of the seat.
Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Uh, welcome to the final episode for the rocking chair build. Before I show you the chair, I want to show you uh, uh, just a couple things about the old chair that uh, I found out during the process. The When I was cleaning the old chair to give back to my mom, I noticed on the bottom of the chair had uh, JCP and some numbers on there. Uh, I'm assuming that means JC Pennies and some sort of production date or uh, inspection code or something like that. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of that here in a few minutes or probably right now. And um, if anybody knows what this means or how to get a original picture or you know, some sort of JCPenney database of older furnitures that they sold, uh, please leave them in the description below. I'd be curious to know uh, when this chair was originally made and how much it was at that time. Yeah, I think that'd be interesting to know. But I've, as far as the chair being in the family, I've found pictures dating to at least back to 1978. And uh, that was the year I was born. And I found a few other pictures throughout the years. Um, I know there's a bunch of more pictures. I just wasn't able to find them. Uh, and I'll show you those throughout the build, uh, throughout this process as well. As far as the finish goes, I went with uh, a, a shellac finish. And I used uh, uh, something else I haven't tried before. And it's the shellac flakes. Uh, this one is, uh, I bought this at Rockler, uh, Blonde D-Wax Shellac Flakes. And um, it really worked out really well. I used a, um, a formula that gave me a one and a half pound cut. And I'll put that uh, formula chart uh, somewhere on this video as well. And if not, I'll at least put the link in the description of the formula chart that I used. Um, I didn't film any of the finishing process. Uh, I snapped pictures kind of throughout the process and posted them on social medias. So if you do follow me on social medias, you've probably seen uh, um, some of the pieces hanging from my garage uh, ceiling. Um, but I did use a HVLP sprayer. Uh, it was just a cheap automotive sprayer that I picked up at work. And I took them outside, hung them on the clothes uh, clothesline and I sprayed them once I got done spraying them I brought them back into the garage and let them dry uh, it didn't take very long to dry uh, maybe a couple hours and I was able to work with them again if I wanted to uh, but I did leave everything for a 24-hour drying process um, but I think I could have worked with them within a couple hours uh, all the pieces to the rocking chair at this point has two coats of this, um, of this finish put on the finish when it's, um, you know, mixed up, it's quite liquidy. <laughs> and, um, uh, I took a uh, guy's workshop, uh, suggestion and put the date on the top of the jar, uh, put what kind of cut I used, which is one and a half pounds. And then uh, I labeled it uh, Blonde D-Wax Shellac. And um, I just put it in these mason jars. Um, but it worked out really well. And that was the first time I've ever used them. And uh, I wanted to try something different when I finished the... I wanted to try something different when I finished it. Um, seeing how this project was uh, pretty much completely new stuff for me. Um, you know, reverse engineering a chair and building it from a copy, complete new process for me. Not only building a chair, but also reverse engineering a chair to, to uh, make my own. Okay, let's break this chair down just a little bit. Uh, this is the finished project, at least as far as I'm going to take it on video. Um, at this stage, I need to do one more sanding to the entire piece, uh, probably 600 grit to maybe 800 or 1,000 grit sandpaper. And then um, put
put one more coat on the whole thing and then uh, wax it after that. And then this chair will be completely done. But I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff. Um, I think I've uh, bored you enough with 13 videos, right? <laughs> um, the top piece that I was mentioning, uh, it was altered from the original design. And the reason was, uh, on my design, on the back, on the back two spindles, uh, they're more vertical on my piece. And it wasn't done like that on purpose. Uh, I just didn't drill out the angle holes on the chair for these pieces, right? They should have been flared out a little bit more. And uh, so when I went to fit the old piece in, or the, uh, the copied piece in, it didn't fit. It actually stuck out to about right here, a um, couple inches past. So I actually either, the only way to fix it was either to make a whole new seat, plug the holes, and redrill the holes, or uh, remake or recut this piece here. Um, so that's what I chose to do. I just cut those a little shorter, made my own profile, and went with that design instead of the original design. So the other things, a couple other things that I uh, that I kind of messed up on, um, I don't think I completely messed up on, but uh, some of these back spindles, uh, the tenons that went into the uh, top piece and the chair, they ended up a little smaller than I, I wanted. Uh, so they are in there kind of loose. Uh, they're not gonna fall out because they are, um, into the chair and into this top piece. So I'm not worried about that. The, the only thing that, I'm, that I don't like is uh, way up here at the top, they, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of loose, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm not gonna remake anything. I'm, I'm gonna leave it as is and uh, just let it uh, have some character. <laughs> it's not a mistake, it's a character feature. Um, other than that, the spindles turned out great. Um, I have no complaints on any of the spindles. The arms turned out great. The seat turned out awesome. Uh, couldn't ask for a better piece of uh, cherry to choose from. Um, I think the seat turned out awesome. Uh, the cupping process to the chair was challenging and uh, a lot of sanding to that, fe that feature but I think it's a perfect fit and it's just subtle enough where, um, where it's, it's perfect in my eyes. Um, the, the rockers turned out awesome. All the bending for this project turned out really well. So I was pretty pleased with that. Uh, I got my logo down here, uh, stamped on. And uh, on the spindles that come through the top of the seat, they are uh, wedged in there with wedges. Um, so they shouldn't come out ever. The uh, tenons that go into the rocker, uh, even on the old chair, they had staples going through the side. I really don't think I needed them, but I did put them there just in case because the old chair had them there. So I figured they were there for a reason. Um, all the tenons for the stretchers, um, they fit beautifully. Uh, couldn't ask for a better fit. Um, everything is glued in at this stage and uh, it is permanent. It's not gonna come apart unless I make it come apart. So I'm very pleased on the way this turned out. Um, like I said, I gotta put uh, one more coat of finish on everything and uh, put some wax on it. Okay, before I wrap this video up, um, I just want to give a couple thanks out to a few people out there that helped me with this project. First and foremost, uh, Bob Lee. Bob Lee has his own YouTube channel, and uh, he was graciously enough to donate all the wood for this project. And um, really, without you, Bob, I couldn't have done this project. So if you haven't seen Bob Lee's YouTube channel, please go down in the link in the description and go check him out. 
he does a weekend warrior type projects and uh, uh, he, he's just an overall good fellow. Uh, another thanks goes out to Guy at Guy's Woodshop. Uh, he allowed me to use the his lathe to cut the long spindles on this project. Uh, my lathe wasn't long enough to do those two spindles and uh, he I found out he lives about 30 minutes from me so that worked out really well and uh, Guy thank you for your advice and uh, thank you for use of your lathe I really appreciate that and I'll leave his link in the description below as well if you don't if you haven't seen his channel um, of course thank you to all my subscribers for hanging out with this long process of this chair um, it wasn't intended to uh, be a week after week project and uh, it just ended up that way I didn't have anything else on my plate so I just moved forward with the chair because that's what I was working on so it I think overall it worked out well um, I just apologize for the uh, a long video series because that's usually not my style um, you know I'm kind of a guy that just gets in and gets it done and uh, this one was a little different it took me a lot longer than expected. Started this adventure at Easter this year when I brought the old chair home. <laughs> I just got a text. <laughs> R2D2 is telling me I have a text. Um, but I started this venture at Easter uh, when I brought the old chair home and, uh, you know, started, started the process pretty much right then. So thank you to all the subscribers and uh, hanging out with me during this process and keeping me motivated to finish the process. Uh, really without any of you, um, it, it may have just ended up on the back burner and um, it could have been years before I finished this. And uh, I'm kind of glad it's done. I'm, I'm kind of over it <laughs> at this point. So uh, again, thank you. And uh, that's really all I got. And again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you. What I love about this chair is uh, a it's still holding together after almost three years, and the way that this cherry wood has darkened up, and the uh, cupping of the seat is is really very subtle when you're touching and feeling it, but it really does make a big difference when you're actually sitting in it, and um, that is another thing I really like about this chair. Um, not only uh, all that stuff, but I made it. <laughs> and that's the most satisfying thing about this chair is I made it. Um, yes, it was a copy from another chair. Um, and it's not my original design, but you know what? I made it. It's mine and I love it. And I, I use it quite often. I keep it in my bedroom. I put my shoes on every morning sitting in this chair and, uh, um, I just I just love it. So I want to do reintroduce this video and this video series and uh, just kind of show you uh, then and now and uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time.